Hello, I'm John Hyde of BBJ Sim Racing and uh, today I'm just going to go through installation and setting up of, uh, of my 22 button button box uh, in iRacing. Uh, I hope you'll find this of uh, some help to if you're uh, setting up one of mine or one of anybody's button boxes. Okay, this is the board I cut to mount a new button box on my rig. I'm just going to tidy the edges off with some black tape just so when it sits on the rig it looks like it's black and saves me the hassle of painting it. Okay, here's the board taped up and ready to have boxes glued to it and to be stuck on my rig. I'm now ready to glue my uh, button box onto my board that I prepared earlier. I'm going to use shoe goo, which is a glue that was devised for skaters to fix their shoes. It's a very strong glue. Uh, things stuck with shoe goo certainly aren't going to fall apart but it never really sets solid either so you've always got a chance of uh, getting stuff apart if you want to later on without damaging it. Also any residual glue is very easy to remove so this is a great glue. So I'm just going to stick this together, stick a weight on top of it and then go off to lunch and then half an hour to an hour should certainly be set well enough to work with. So here we are. I've glued the button box to the board and we're all good to go to go and put it to the rig. As you can see, I've just made a nice solid job of it. It's not going anywhere. Okay, I've removed the old button box and this is the space we've got to play with. Uh, I've cut some like small strips of wood that I can pack in behind so I can position the button box exactly where I want it. So what I'm going to want to do is have the button box something like in that area angled slightly towards me Right, so I've finally got the button box fixed in position and now we can start on the fun stuff of actually getting it set up. And this is going to be the best bit. Well, hello, here we are, sit at my rig. So uh, now we can do the uh, installation and uh, start setting up some stuff with the button box which is going to be a lot more fun than all the running around with video cameras I've been doing so far. Uh, right, you're looking at a blue screen because that's the, my middle monitor of my uh, racing setup. So there will be a certain amount of me dragging screens in and out. Uh, button box is not installed on this PC at the moment so what I'm going to do is plug it in and then we can wait for it to self install. It says installing device driver software, click here for details. So, right, that's quick. It's called a Zinmo controller for your reference and it's obviously self installed and it's ready to go. So in Windows 7 if you go control panel devices and printers Zinmo controller, right click on that and game controller settings. Double click Zinmo controller. And you can do this with any of your controllers and it will bring up a screen where you can test it. And you can see. All these buttons test as active. I 
which is great. So, next thing I'm going to do is fire up iRacing and we can uh, assign some buttons to various functions. I've got my old button box here with all the old labels still on it so I'm going to set up the new one basically to mimic this. This button box had rotary encoders on it which at the time I thought were the bee's knees but having lived with them for a little while they are prone to error because they're quite touchy with the speed that you rotate them and when you're trying to drive a car and do five other things at the same time it's easy to spin one and then you'll get all kinds of random results but more of that later on let's just start off with a, a few simple things right so first things I want to assign that were assigned to my old button box will look left and look right so this will be these two top buttons up here so what you do is click on it choose a control to look left and click done so you press your button device 4 button 3 that is click done and we're done and choose control to look right we'll go for the one next to it because left and right obviously device 4 button 15 and done Click done to complete this wizard, and that's it. That's our first two buttons assigned. Don't think there's anything else on this screen. Don't think there's anything on here. All this stuff I tend to do elsewhere. All this in-car stuff is where the toggle switches are going to shine, so we'll come back to all that lot. So, I use these buttons to bring up a couple of the black boxes, so... the in-car adjustments black box so that's there we want the fuel and tyres black boxes obviously so we'll take the fuel there You take that there. Right, that's got a few of the basic controls set up for the uh, for the button box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording and get those labelled up so I don't forget what they are. Uh, and then I'll come back and we can uh, set some in-car controls. Right, okay, so that's got those basic buttons labelled up. I mean, look left and look right. Really, I could have them on my wheel. Might be a better place for them. Certainly if I had a single monitor, I'd have those as like, the main buttons I was using. So I've got the relative. That's the screen in iRacing that 
gives you the relative positions of the cars around you so you can see who's coming up on you and who's your, who you're catching. In car opens the in car adjustments window so you can see what you're adjusting as you're driving. Obviously this is important to have this information if you want to adjust stuff as you're driving along. Fuel, you're going to need to set your fuel for fuel stops on the fly and same for tyres, you're going to need to set up your tyre strategy on the fly. So it's really handy to have buttons for those. Uh, what I'm going to do now is on these four toggle buttons on the bottom here, I'm going to assign my four most used in-car adjustments. So we can use these for that click adjustments on the fly. So the first one is brake bias. Now you'll see in iRacing it gives you brake bias increase, brake bias decrease and brake bias set. You never need to assign anything to the sets because these increase and decreases are live all the time. Even if you don't open the window, the buttons are still live, and you can still make you can still make your adjustments on the fly. So let's go ahead and brake bias increase, which means move the brake bias towards the front of the car in iRacing. Done. Brake bias decrease which means move the bias towards the rear of the car done. We've now got a control that we can change the brake bias of the car so help the balance of the car on the fly while we're driving around. Next one that I use all the time if the car has got it is traction control. Now there's three controls for traction control. There's a traction control on and off, which I think we probably should assign a button to. And then you can have traction control increase, which I'll go back to the toggle. So we'll be able to just toggle that up and traction control decrease. Done. The other two that if the car's got them I'll always use is the anti-roll bar adjustments, the ability to adjust the anti-roll bars of the car while you're driving can make a huge difference and if like, you get changing track conditions or tyres are changing you can really like, keep the balance of the car in with these. So front anti-roll bar increase, we'll put it in the third toggle in there. Third, let your roll bar decrease there. Third, front. And rear anti roll bars, same thing. Increase there. And decrease there. And that's it, we're all set. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these up and then we can put the car on the track and demonstrate what we've done. Right, I've got the uh, buttons that we've created all labelled up and I'll just take the liberty of changing car and track. Uh, I've gone for the uh, new Corvette at Monza just because that's got a lot of in-car adjustments and uh, Monza has a load of straights so we've got a bit of time to play around with all this stuff. Just wait for it to load. Talk amongst yourself. Go. Oh, I don't really match with that setup. Right, as a default, I'd normally have 
I mean, on relative, there's only this is test room, so there's only going to be me in here. Um, the other buttons I have on my button box are fuel, so it shows you the main fuel in your car, the estimated laps, and you can set here how much fuel, if any, you want to add at your next pit stop. Tyres is the same thing, you can uh, check box whether you want tyres at your next pit stop and if you want any changes to the tyre pressures. And then if we bring up the in-car, you can see we've got five things in this car that we can change on the fly. So if we take the car out, So I lock the front up, so you can say, well, maybe, uh, maybe I need to move the brake bias back a bit. So uh, there you go. Just clicking that down. I bet I lose the back end now. skating the back end now, which I was there. So you can move it back forward a bit. Similarly, getting it screwily out of corners. You just mop up the traction control. Knock it down again, turn it off from here. So it doesn't shut like windows, that's a bad example. They say you cut the course. You'll have to slow down and give up the time gained. And that's pretty much it. Um, hope you enjoy your BBJ Sim Racing button box and uh, I'll see you on the track.